If your goal is to make the next level in hockey, stop trying to be Connor McDavid. So I want to tell you a story about my hockey career and what I learned through the mistakes I made. So I wanted the spotlight. And through my minor hockey career, I never really got the spotlight. I was usually the person who played third or fourth line. I never got a ton of attention. And I was kind of the guy in the background. And so when I went to junior hockey, the first thing I thought is, well, I'm going to turn I'm going to turn things around. I'm going to become a whole different player and I'm going to be the guy who now, you know, gets attention, who scores goals and who gets all of the spotlight. I wanted to be like Nikita Kucherov. I wanted to be, to be that guy who is a great power play shooter, who's really good at setting up plays and who's a really good offensive passer, somebody who was a little bit more risky, who liked to hold the puck and who's a bit more of a flowing style. That seemed like the right idea at the time. It made sense to me. So I started learning how to improve my mechanics. I started focusing on trying to move like he did. And at the time, again, it made total sense. I'll just, you know, become that player and get all the attention I want. Well, once I started to do that, especially in the middle of my junior career is where I really started, it started to kind of cost me because that's not what I was best suited for. I was best suited for being someone more like Patrice Bergeron, somebody who is very composed all the time, who's a great leader, who's calm, who doesn't make risky plays, somebody who's great in both ends of the ice and very consistent in both ends, somebody who plays better with somebody like Nikita Kucherov or in Bergeron's case, David Pasternak, right? He's somebody who complements superstars very well and in his own right, became a superstar by being someone who was consistent and always helping the team win. Had a great plus minus, things like that. That was his player archetype was a two-way forward. And I had the archetype of a two-way forward, but I really wanted to force myself into a different situation, into a different archetype. I wanted to be more of a shooter style forward. And that's just not what I was suited for. I had a good shot. I didn't have the best shot. And I thought, well, if I just work on it more, that'll make the difference. And see, a lot of people have this high ambition. A lot of people have this drive to do the same thing. They think that, well, I've never gotten the spotlight. It's time I get my shine and I get to be the one who gets noticed. Well, the challenge with this is that it may seem like it's just a little bit away. You're super, super close, but there's something there that's going to block you and cause you to not get as far as you could if you embrace your own player archetype and your style and understand what it is that you're already best at. So these elite players like a Connor McDavid, like a Sidney Crosby, similar to a Nikita Kucherov, I think Nikita Kucherov is a bit more of a, he has a bit more specific tools that he likes to use or style he likes to play. But these guys give the illusion of a complete player. They give the illusion that somebody can be almost perfect like they can kind of do everything at a super high level especially offensively now again they're not actually complete they everybody has their their weak points that they can improve on you know even Connor mcdavid has points that he can work on but the challenge is is that these elite guys give you the illusion that they're just like exceptional at everything that they have so many different different strengths and so we as players who aren't these freak um, athlete athletic people, these ones who aren't just naturally the absolute best and super far ahead of everybody, we very easily get caught up in the allure of, well, I'm just going to like master everything. Like I'm just going to be a great shoot, a great shooter, a great stick handler, a great skater, a great passer, great at hitting, great at battling, great at offense, great at defense. And you do long term want to become great at everything. But you can't just attack everything all at once and expect, well, I'll just separate myself from everybody by just doing everything. The difference is, is that you have to attack certain things at certain times and have a development path forward and have a strategy that you implement on a consistent basis. This allows you to actually continue to improve and separate over time. If you don't do this, you're going to fall behind because you end up just always allocating energy in so many different directions. And there's this image that you'll see here, which is if you put 10 points of focus into one direction, you end up like super far in one direction. But if you only put, if you put 10 points of focus in 10 different directions, you end up just little tiny bits in all directions. 
So I'm not saying that you don't work on everything, but the challenge is, is that you're not really going to get noticed if you just work on everything all at once. And I don't want you to make the mistake because I see so many players make the same mistake I did thinking, well, I'll just be like that elite, elite player. I'll switch up my whole player archetype. I'll become a completely new person and I'll just, you know, copy stuff and be just like McDavid, just like Kucherov, just like Crosby. But when in reality, that's not what was going to benefit me. So the thing to realize is when we look at these elite freak players, they're somebody, they're kind of like an Elon Musk. Like Elon Musk in the business world is good at everything. He can pretty much do anything he wants at a pretty high level. That's somebody who is just a genius who you don't want to try to compete directly with. You don't want to try to be exactly like Elon Musk because you're not, you're going to end up just being a really bad version of Elon Musk. He's, you're going to be like, you know, one tenth of that, that ability. And the same thing happens when somebody, for example, they are, let's say, in the trade space in, in work. Maybe somebody's like a electrician. And you can be a super successful electrician without having to be a super successful archetype or architect, without having to be a super successful carpenter or a super successful, let's say, plumber or you know, just general construction worker, whatever it is, you don't have to be just a total general contractor in order to be extremely successful in specific areas. And a lot of times, if you actually look at it, you make a ton of money in the business world if you are actually specifically good at something because you have a scarce resource, something that not everybody can do at a high, high level. And so when you're a player, the thing to realize is that you have strengths. You have things that you are very, very good at. You have things that you are already better than most players at. And instead of pursuing a whole bunch of different things and kind of allowing that skill that you have that's already almost better than, like, better than most people, instead of using that to separate yourself from other people, you put energy into other things and now you end up just being like pretty good at a bunch of things. And that was the exact mistake I made. I got caught up in trying to compete with everybody around me. I got caught up in trying to play someone else's game and be someone else. And then I ended up not really being that great at anything because I was just kind of like a Swiss Army knife, right? Swiss Army knives are cool because they have a bunch of different tools, but none of the tools are the best at that tool. And so a lot of times you'll see people when they like live at home, they're going to just have all the specific tools like you're going to have a proper set of scissors instead of using those stupid little ones on this little pocket knife or you're going to use a like a chef knife to cut food you're going to use for example like an actual screwdriver to drive screws sure a swiss army knife is great in these random situations where you need you know this last minute thing and you can try to be that you can try to be the best swiss army knife in the world but it's a very difficult thing to pursue when you already have other strengths. And so I remember this experience I had with my coach, which is in my 19 year old year in junior hockey, my coach comes to me and well, actually I came to him and asked him, Hey, like, you know, how can I get more ice time? Like, what can I do? And he just said, I don't know, because you're kind of just good at everything. You're not great at anything, but you're, you're good at everything. And that like really got to me because I thought in my head, like, but that's, that's right. Like, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm doing the right thing because I'm just good at everything. But the challenge is that coaches don't know how to play you. They don't know how to allocate their, allocate their resources, aka like you as a player are a resource for them. Like, they don't know how to actually use you. Like, do they give you ice time? Do they put you on the ice in, you know, need to score situations? Do they put you on the ice in shutdown situations? I mean... I don't know because you're not the best at any of those situations. So it's very difficult to, to decide how to use you. And again, you look at these other players and you think, man, well, these elite NHLers, they're doing all this. Why can't I? But the thing is, is you can build into that as you get older and as you develop. But if you can have a more specific set of skills and a skill stack, as we're going to talk about, and use it to become somebody that nobody else can compete with. You become your own unique identity. And nobody can really touch you. Nobody can really beat you at being you. And that makes you special. That makes you significantly more valuable. And it makes you honestly kind of impossible to replace. 
Because how do you replace somebody who has built this very unique set of a core set of skills that they're just really, really good at, and then they don't really have any true weaknesses? And last week and the last couple of weeks, we've talked about bottlenecks and making sure that you don't have any really weak points and always pursuing and attacking those weak points so that you don't have anything holding you back. That is a key. But if you get caught up in thinking that strengths and pillar skills, as I call them, if you get caught up in thinking that pillar skills don't matter and you should just be good at everything and everything will become a pillar, it's not really going to work because you're going to get left behind before you get a chance for everything to develop that high. And you just can't be the best at every single thing because it's been proven time and time again that nobody really ever is the best at every single thing. Like Crosby doesn't have the best one-timer and Crosby's not the fastest and McDavid doesn't have the best one-timer. He doesn't have like the best hands. He doesn't have the best defensive play, but he has some things that, that are the best. He is probably one of the fastest, maybe not even the fastest, but he's probably the fastest at lateral movement and he's also the fastest at being able to stick handle at speed and be deceptive at speed and he has an extremely high hockey iq right like there are layers to what make people different and separate themselves but it's not about being the best at everything because it's just not a realistic goal and we get this idea this this concept of completeness that makes us pursue things that are not actually truly helpful to us so here is the real game the real game is that you have to stop pursuing being the same player as somebody else. If you do, you will end up being the second or less best version of that person. You're just not going to be as good as them because they've already figured out how to be them through all the experiences and all the training they've had. And so don't try to be the best version of someone else. Be the best version of you. What you want to do is stop comparing yourself to a McDavid, to a Crosby, to a Kucherov, to a McKinnon, and start saying, what can I take from these players? What are the tools and the techniques that I can say, this applies directly to my style, and how can I take the things that I'm already good at and build a core skill stack of pillar skills, pillar skills being like the key strength skills, the strongest skills you have, how can I build those so that I can become a unique player that provides unique value to any team and is irreplaceable, that can't be replaced? That is what is going to make you completely different, whether you're playing minor hockey, whether you're playing high school, whether you're playing junior, whether you're playing college, whether you're playing pro, whatever league you're playing in, this will work. This will make you different from other people, and this will allow you to actually reach your potential because that's the game you're playing is you're trying to reach your potential. You're trying to reach, reach your best version of you. Because if you can become the best version of you, as cliche and, and you know as common as that word sounds, like, oh, just be you, just be the best version of you. But the thing is, is that's actually what separates you. That's actually what makes you great. Because if you get caught up in thinking that's not the case, I promise you that you will end up being just a crappy version of someone else. And I don't want you to end up in that place. So I'm going to pop up an image here, and it is the skill continuum. And how the skill continuum works is that you have skills on this continuum. The skills are represented by these little lines with dots on each side. And the idea with this is that the skill has a range that it can be in at any given point. Like It's not like you just have an ability like a shot, and you always shoot exactly the same way every moment there's a range of ability you have at that at that shot. That's why you don't like score every single time you shoot. You don't skate exactly perfectly every time because there's a range. Now, if you look at the top right quadrant, that is really where your pillar skill will be found. The furthest top right skill is your pillar skill. And then on the top left, that's where you wanna to look to see what your bottleneck skill is. That's because that is a low value skill or it's a high value skill but you don't have a lot of skill in that area. You're not very good at it right now. So top left is the place where it's a bottleneck that you really want to improve because it's something that coaches value, but you're not good at it right now, and it's going to pull your game down. And then top right, the furthest top right skill, is your pillar because it is something that is high value and that you're already good at. And now your key is to create two or three of the, like one, two or three of these skills 
that are in the top 20% of your league. So, you know, one out of every five players, you want to be in that, like one out of five, you're the best at this skill, right? So maybe top like 50-ish in your league at three abilities. What this does is it gives you a unique skill stack where you're pretty much like nobody in your league is exactly like you in these core areas. Now, I'm not saying like be the best at shooting, be top 20% in shooting, stick handling, skating. I'm saying like general areas within it. Like, you know, it could be like top speed is in the top 20%. It could be um, stick handling through traffic is in the top 20%. It could be one timer is in the top 20%. Like it's a unique set of like specific tools that you can use. And it may be something that's a little more broad, but again, don't get caught up in like, oh, I'm just going to be top 20% in everything. Like, yes, long term you do. And maybe you are, are already on the edge of that. Maybe you are that elite like freak player and you can apply the goal of just being the best at everything. But that's probably not the case. Instead, pick those three things. And then one of them should be more your like true pillar that the other ones ideally complement. That's the goal is you should really have three core pillar skills or three pillar skills. Your core pillar should be the one that is in the top 5%. So that's like, you know, top like 10, 20 of your league. Ideally, you really want to be the best on your team at it. And ideally, the like one of the best in the league at one of those skills. Again, specific. Figure out how it also connects to your player archetype that you've built or the player archetype that you're transitioning into. So if you're trying to be a two-way forward, maybe you want to be top 5% at face-offs. Maybe that's your like core pillar skill. It doesn't matter what it is. It's like It does, but it doesn't matter that much. But essentially what you're trying to do is create something that makes you just a truly unique identity that no one can compete with. Now you're starting to see how this stuff all connects together. This is what makes players different. This is what makes you somebody that nobody else can touch nobody else can get close to it's so so important to understand this stuff now when we look at that core pillar skill another way to say it is this is something that separates you because when you have a skill that is in the top five percent of a league and you're one of if not you're the best player on your team at that what you've done is you've created something that separates you and makes you unique from people like your, your coach will say, well, in this situation, for example, let's go with the face-off concept. Someone like a Patrice Bergeron, top 5% or maybe, you know, even 1% in the world at face-offs. So he is somebody who is always going to go on the ice when face-offs are on the line. So now look, like, if you're not getting ice time, think about it. Like, that's a valuable skill. That's an asset that now every time you go on, boom, you're the one they go to. So this is why it is so, so important to prioritize having a skill that is in the top 5%. And you may have to make a year long plan or a two or three year long plan to actually get a skill into the top 5%. But once you do, it'll make a huge difference. So now the key with this to actually make this happen is I would lean towards the 80-20 rule of development. So I would spend 80% of your time working on your pillar skills. And then I would spend 20% of your time working on your kind of like general like stacking on a new skill that you don't have and when i say it uh when i say 80 percent, i mean spend 80 percent of your time on your pillars and your bottlenecks so it's really like 40 percent, 40 percent half the time when you have any extra time before and after practice extra training sessions whatever it is 40 percent on your pillar skills 40 percent on your bottlenecks and then 20 percent on new acquiring skills so working on michigans working on toe drags working on things that you don't really use in a game but you want to use to expand and build into other archetypes so if you allocate your time in that way you're really prioritizing the best possible things now you can use this structure to work on anything and like if you have an hour to work on things you spend approximately let's say out of that hour right like 40 percent of the time working on pillars 40 percent working on bottlenecks 20 percent working on just other things that will make the difference for you so give that a shot and see what happens but i promise you that will make a huge difference for you and now remember you want to make sure that you balance improvement and maintenance 
So when I say maintenance, maintenance is when your skills are in the middle of that skill continuum. They're not on the, the bottleneck side, they're not on the pillar side, they're just kind of in the middle. When something's in the middle, that's the time to not really worry about it too much. Let your team practices, let flow drills, whatever general stuff you do, you know, scrimmages, let that stuff cover that middle ground. If you have a skills trainer, they're gonna spend some time in that middle ground, but don't spend a majority of your time in that middle area. Let that maintenance mode just happen through general repetition. That is the key, is to have more focus on pillars, bottlenecks, and then let the, the other stuff stay in maintenance mode. And so ultimately, here's your conclusion. Number one, high-level hockey players should aim to master a few core skills, then strategically stack complementary skills that actually add to it, then approach, that approach leads to unique playing a unique playing identity and this unique playing identity and style sets you apart from other players on the ice it's about being the best version of yourself not being a jack of all trades so in conclusion looking for more if you want help to actually push yourself and go further with this stuff you stuck to, stuck with me to the end here's what i'd recommend if you enjoyed this you can subscribe to the either the podcast the youtube or to the um the identity letter or the blog and you can check this stuff out. I put out at least once every week or two weeks, depending on just how my inspiration is and what I have come up with most recently. But check that out. And then second, I would check out the free Identity Shift Masterclass. There'll be a link below whatever this is you're watching. Check that out. Go and actually go through that whole thing. Because once you go through the Masterclass, that gives you the actual framework and the how-to of step-by-step -step application of how to apply all this stuff, how to actually build a development plan, how to improve your confidence, your focus, your hockey IQ. It gives you the structure of how to do it all. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you have an awesome week and you crush it this week. And I'll talk to you guys next week and enjoy.